In this tutorial package, we are going to optimize the design of a combustion chamber using direct and indirect optimization methods. By clicking on the subscribe button, you will be informed about the newest CFD training videos by Mr. CFD. Or if you are watching the training video, click on the Mr. CFD logo and subscribe. In this package, we are going to first talk about the history and theories behind the optimization method and will enlighten you about the existing and commonly used methods of DOE and optimization. In the next two parts, the combustion process inside a combustion chamber is simulated and parameters such as heat generation rate, pollution formation, etc. are monitored. The target of this project is to optimize the geometrical parameters of the combustion chamber for targets such as maximizing the value of heat generation rate while minimizing the amount of formed pollution. The two types of optimization are examined in this project, indirect optimization using the RSM method and direct optimization. In the indirect optimization step, we use the CCD method to generate the design points needed to perform the RSM analysis. Then, we will perform a parameter correlation process to identify the most effective input parameters on our model. Next, we will show you how to optimize the combustion chamber's input parameters based on the data which was generated for RSM analysis. In the second part, the step to performing direct optimization are shown in which we will first generate the design points needed for optimization process and then by defining desired targets such as maximizing the value of heat generation rate while minimizing the amount of form pollution, the software will start the optimization process and will provide you with the best three candidate points. In this project, the RNGK epsilon model is exploited to solve the turbulent fluid equations. The energy equation is enabled to calculate the temperature change and model the heat transfer. Also, the species transport model along with volumetric reaction option has been activated to simulate the combustion process inside the cylindrical combustion chamber. Now in this table you can see the list of input parameters and their span of variation. Also, you can see the output parameter here as well. Now, what is design of experiment? The term experiment is defined as a systematic method under controlled condition to discover an unknown effect, test or hypothesize or demonstrate a known effect. When analyzing a process, experiments are often performed to evaluate which process inputs have a significant impact on the process output and how many of these inputs must be in order to achieve the desired result. Experimental design is a set of actions performed by modeling and optimizing reaction variables through a statistical method in order to increase product yield without increasing its price. In other words, optimizing is to find the best answer to the output of a function or process by changing the inputs of a system. The word best states that there is more than one answer and solution to a problem, and that finding the best answer depends on the problem at hand, the method of solution, and the permissible error. Now, what is response surface method? Response surface method, or RSM, is a set of statistical techniques and applied mathematics for constructing experimental models. The goal in such a scheme is to optimize the response, or output, which is affected by several independent variables, or inputs. RSM was originally developed for modeling experimental responses and then moved to modeling numerical experiments. Response surface methods can be designed in different ways depending on their application in the experimental design, including CCD and BBD methods. The application of response level method is very wide in industries. These include in the chemical, petrochemical, food, pharmaceutical, microbiological, etc. industries. Now, the most important difference between CCD and BBD methods are in the number of surfaces of the variable they can process, which will be explained in next slides. Now, CCD or central composite method has the same definition as the BBD method with the difference that this time and in this method all factors are examined at five levels minus alpha, minus one, zero, one and alpha. The value of alpha depends on the number of variables and is obtained from the equation alpha is equal to two in power of k over four. For two variables, three variables, and four variables, alpha is equal to 2, 1.68, and 1.41 respectively. 
Now, just like the previous slide, in this slide, another table from another article is extracted, and you can see four factors are selected here, and they are coded in under five levels. The geometry of the present model is designed in ANSYS Design Modeler software and consists of four fuel inlets on the bottom of the chamber and four air inlets on the side walls. Also, a rotating cone is placed in this chamber to cause a swirl flow within the chamber. The meshing of the present model is performed using ANSYS meshing software and its type is on a strike chart. Now, when you click on this extrude command on the low left side of the software window in front of the geometry, select sketch number 4 in which you draw the outline of the fuel in the geometry and then click on apply button. Also, in front of the depth, make sure that you've entered the value of 0.01 meter. Next, to create the geometry and shape of the airflow inlet, we are going to use the primitive shape of a cylinder. Now, in the ANSYS meshing software, if you expand the mesh section, you can see only a body sizing setting is applied. If you click on it, on the low left side of the software window, in front of the type, you can see element size is selected, and then in front of the element size, we have entered the value of 0.004 meter. You can find this command by simply right-clicking on Mesh, going over Insert, and selecting Sizing. Next, click on Volume Selecting button, and then right-click on a blank space, and then go over Select All option. Under the General Setup tab, you can see different buttons from Scales to Units. By clicking on the Scale, a new window will appear showing you the dominant extents of your geometry. Also, under the view length unit section, you can see the default geometry units, which is meter in this project. Also, under the scaling section, uh, under the mesh was created in, you can change the settings uh, in order to activate the scaling factors beneath that. For example, your geometry and mesh was is designed in a software which uh, its default unit was millimeters. By activating these scaling factors, you can change this factor to your desired factors in order to set the length to the appropriate unit. By clicking on check button, uh, you will see that under the console tab, the Fluid software will start to check your mesh for any errors. Now there are several assumptions taken into account for this project. First, the type of our solver is set to be pressure based since we are dealing with incompressible flows. Second, you can see we have selected absolute formulation for velocity. And third, we have selected a steady time study since we didn't want our results to be a function of time. Now if you expand the model section and double click on the energy button, in the appeared box you can see we have enabled the energy equation to calculate for the temperature change inside our computational domain. Also if you click on the viscose button, in the appeared window you can see we have selected RNGK epsilon model to solve for our turbulent fluid equation since this model is more accurate than the standard form. And finally, to model the combustion process inside our combustion chamber, we double click on a species and then in the appeared window under the model tab, we enable the species transfer and under the reaction section, we enable volumetric reactions. Also under the option, you can see we have selected and enabled the option of diffusion energy source, which enters the diffusion energy of a species as a source term in the energy equation. Also, under the turbulence chemistry interaction, you can see we have selected edit dissipation. And finally, if you click on edit button under the mixture properties, you can select the species you want to be included inside your combustion process. Now, after double clicking on the boundary conditions button and the appearance of a new part in the middle section of the fluent software, if you click on the air inlet boundary, you can see that the type of this boundary is defined as mass flow inlet. By clicking on edit button, you can adjust the settings related to this boundary. In the appeared window under the momentum tab, you can see the mass flow rate of the airflow entering through this boundary.
Next, if you click on the fuel inlet boundary, again, you can see if the type of this boundary is defined as mass flow inlet. Just like your previous boundary, if you click on edit button, you can further adjust the settings related to this boundary. Again, under the momentum tab, you can see the value for the mass flow rate of the fuel. Under the thermal tab, you can see the temperature of the fuel. And finally, under the species tab, you can see the mass fraction of the methane, which is equal to 1, which means that only fuel can enter from this boundary. Now, if you click on the cone wall and then click on edit button, in the appeared window under the wall motion, you can see moving wall is selected. And its motion is rotational with a rotation axis origin and rotation axis direction that you can see in this slide. Also, as for the speed of rotation, you can see we have entered a parametric value, which you can define by following the next steps shown in the next slides. Now, in this section, you can see both input parameters and output parameters and change their name. Now in this part, under the input parameters section, if you click on each of the input parameters and then enable or disable them, you can include or exclude that input parameter inside your model. For example, in this project, you can easily see that we have disabled the effects of input parameters of number of air inlets and number of fuel inlets. Also, if you click on each of these input parameters on the low left side of the software window, you can see its lower and upper bound that we will investigate inside our project. Here you can see the lower and upper bound for the outer diameter input parameter. After the simulation process is finished, just click on response surface to view the results. Now in this part, scroll down and then click on responses. Now before proceeding to the response and results section, if you click on goodness of fit, you can see the difference between the obtained results and the predicted results by the response surface methodology. Now in this graph, you can see that a good agreement exists between the results and the response obtained by this methodology. Under the axis section, you can select three parameters among the defined parameters to see their interaction with each other. Now if you click on the local sensitivity in this color graph, you can see the parameters that has the biggest effect on the output parameters. Now to make sure that our response surface solution is correct, we gotta perform a parameter correlation process. Find it under the design exploration section and click on it and then drag it over a blank space and then create a link between response surface and parameter correlation. After clicking on the parameter correlations button in the new window, without changing any settings, just click on preview button so that the sampling and design points are created for you. Now if you click on the correlation matrix, you can see the correlation between each input and output parameter. Now before jumping to the matrix, we'll explain the color code here. Red represents the highest positive impact, while the dark blue implies the opposite. The gray indicates very low to zero impact. For example, the color between input parameter of cone angular velocity from first column and chamber heat flux from the last row is red, meaning that by increasing the cone angular velocity, the value of chamber heat flux will also increase. However, the opposite can be said for input parameter of cone angular velocity and outlet of carbon dioxide mass fraction. Also, this matrix shows that we could have omitted parameters like cone horizontal value, diameter of fuel inlet, offset in air and fuel inlets, and decrease our computational cost and time. Now double click on the optimization button so that the related window is opened. Now in this window, click on optimization button and then on the lower side of the software window, you can see the related settings for this process. It should only be mentioned that we haven't changed anything and all the settings are set to their default.
Now to set goals and targets for your optimization process, just right click on objectives and constraints, go over insert objective on and then select any output parameter you want to put constraint on. For example, here we're going to select outlet carbon dioxide mass fraction. Now if you click on each of the output parameters, it will appear in the shown table. Now under the type, you can select what you want with this output parameter. For example, if you want to maximize it or you want to minimize it or you even want to set a target for it, you can go ahead and select that option. When you click on the update button, you will see that a table, just like what you can see in this slide now, will appear in your system and the software will start to simulate each design point and state. And finally, when the optimization process is finished, click on Convergence Criteria and you will see that the software will introduce you with three candidate points based on the input parameters and show you the output parameters to satisfy the objectives that you set in the first place. After double clicking on the method, you will see that a new window will appear showing you the pressure velocity coupling, which in this project is set to be coupled. Also, you, will, you can see that uh, the spatial discretization methods are shown in this window. For example, the pressure discretization is defined to be second order, or for the momentum, second order upwind. Also, you can change this discretization into other formats, like you can change them into first order upwind. Now, the couple to scheme is kind of an algorithm in which uh, pressure and velocity equations are solved together in tandem. This algorithm may be more accurate and exact in comparison to iterative algorithm, but it may take more computational time in comparison to algorithm like simple or simple C or other algorithm. After double clicking on the controls button, in the middle section of the software window, you can see that new part will appear. In the appear part, you can see other relaxation factors for different parameters. Now these values are set here by the software automatically. You can change these values, which are between 0 and 1, by yourself for different projects you do. But it is highly recommended that you do not do that, since it may result in divergence. Obtain the full training movie and also all the related files by purchasing this product. To benefit from Mr. CFD services, including simulation, consultation, and training, contact our experts via info at mrcfd.com.